Hi, I'm Marshall Lehman and I'm a Knox County Master Gardener. Today we're going to be pruning a nine bark. This is a native plant. Native plants are becoming a lot more interesting to the general homeowner. Um, but this one has been in the ground for, I don't know, four or five years. It has had some annual pruning. The nine bark is a cane shrub, so yes, you will need to do pruning every year. You'll take out the oldest, biggest, fattest canes, keep it looking like a five or six year old plant. But before we actually start, and we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up, uh, I'm gonna step out of the picture so I can come back and zoom in because one of the interesting features of the nine bark is its exfoliating bark. And in the winter, when it has dropped all its leaves, is when you get the best view of it. So the the peeling bark is a feature, not a problem. It is not a symptom of disease or damage. It is part of what makes the nine bark interesting. And legend has it that the way it got the name nine bark is that you could peel nine strips of bark to go all the way around a stem. Now, some of these stems are still too small to get nine strips. But when you get into some of the bigger ones at the bottom, I can understand where it might actually take nine little strips to work your way around the circumference of the stem or the branch. So let me come out. We'll zoom in and, on, and try to get you a better look at the exfoliating bark. And then we'll come back and we'll start clean up from the bottom as we always do with a cane shrub. Okay, you can still hear me even though you can't see me, but here I am focused on the, the trunk of the nine bark. And you can see the exfoliating bark. I mean, it really looks like the bark is peeling off of this thing, but this is just its natural, its natural habit. And as we come up the stem, yeah, it's, it's just, if you like this exfoliating look, the nine bark is a good plant for you to add to your uh, inventory of shrubs. Okay, so as in every other pruning video on a cane shrub, we start at the bottom with our hand pruners and take out the really spindly little stuff. If it's spindly now, it's never really going to be strong enough to support a big stem with, that's loaded with flowers. What's really interesting is this looks so bare and the only interesting feature right now is the exfoliating bark. But in the summertime, it is filled with these dark maroon leaves. And then the flowers are rather small and almost unnoticeable. You really have to look for the flowers. But after the flowers come berries that the birds absolutely love. So it's another reason why this is in, in my, my landscape. I, I like that it's a, a native plant. I like that it produces berries that the birds love. Um, and so I'm willing to do the, the annual prune up, pruning cleanup. And being a cane shrub, you also have to look for things that want to come out from the, from the base. I've got two here that I think probably need the loppers. We don't want them growing out parallel to the ground. We'll take those off, and then I see one on the back side here coming out in the ground. And whoop, there's another little spindly one. Oh, it's actually coming from that broke off. Okay, so we've got the little spindly ones. I see I've got an old pruning cut that I probably need to clean up. But the spindly stuff is taken off the bottom. So now what I'm concerned about or interested in doing is taking off things that are going to restrict airflow and sunlight. So this wants to go up towards the center. This one is definitely coming up through the center and crossing. So we'll take that one off. I need to be... We'll take off some of these little ones down here low. That 
one, that one's broken. Again, anything that's dead, disease, damaged, you can take off any time of year. This reduction type pruning where you take out a couple of major stems perhaps, uh, I would say I pruned this one pretty hard last year, so I don't have any major stems to take out. This is more pruning to increase the airflow and sunshine into the center. So I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so I can stand up and not just be headless. <laughs> so hold on a moment. Okay, so we're done working down around the base, so it helps to walk around the plant and look at where things are crossing. So here's one that just wants to cross. So we'll, t we'll take that one out. This one's already rubbing a bit. This wants to come in through the center. This, the very center. I mean, this looks kind of like a, a major stem, so I really want to keep this but I may need to clean up some stuff coming up that stem. And then the question is, uh, any place you see things rubbing, if you can't uncross them and get them to stop rubbing, then one of them has to come out and you get to make that decision. There is a really healthy looking shoot. Let me walk around behind. Yeah. Then you then you see that this is crossing. So we'll take that one off. This one is crossing. Another one that wants to work its way through the center. you have to kind of envision what it will look like when it has leaves and flowers and berries on it and say once it's fully leafed out do you think you could uh, blow a fan and feel it feel, feel the air on the back side opposite where the fans blowing through so right now I'm just thinning things out thinking about airflow and sunshine now here I've got two they're not crossing yet I'm going to give those another year to see if they're going to become a problem or if they can stay. This one comes out the back. It's not yet sticking out over the end of the bed, so it's not going to hit me when I mow the lawn. So that one's okay. But we'll take off a couple little, little stems in there. I don't know about you, but I have a habit of getting whacked in the face when I do this, so in that sense it's a good thing that I wear glasses. And it does help to work on the, on the shrub from multiple sides because you just see things differently and say, oh, when I was looking at it from the front I didn't see that crossing, but now that I look at it from the back, something's got to go and we're thinning this out. And if you were to see the, the things I've taken off, they're not quite spindly like the things at the bottom, but they are barely the diameter of a number two pencil. So they're still on the small side. Yep, that one wants to grow up in through there. Let me walk back around here. Get this one. And you'll notice I've not done any shortening. It really doesn't need that, uh, that type of pruning, plus that tends to generate some funky growth. So try to avoid the temptation to do that unless it's absolutely necessary. Your question really should be, can I follow that stem back to a major branch and take it off there? Or should I just take it all the way off at, at the main stem? 
um, as opposed to saying, gee, I'm going to cut it up here. So I think the only other angle that I want to look at it is from the front, but you don't really want to see my backside while I do that. So um, I would say I have, I'll, I need, I do need to get my folding saw out to clean up one old pruning cut down at the base that I clearly did not do a good job on last year. And then I have, I just noticed, that's actually dead. So sometimes, again, being a cane shrub, you can just break those off if they're dead. So I think we're going to call this a wrap on pruning the nine bark today. Again, its major feature is this lovely exfoliating bark. And unfortunately, you know, the folks walking by aren't close enough to see that. You really need to be up close and personal to see the exfoliating bark. So I get to enjoy it. And then, as I say, the flowers are really small. The flowers are small. So you have to be paying attention to actually notice them. But then they produce berries that the birds absolutely love. So again, if you're looking for another native plant to put in a foundation bed or in an open space, uh, I would say consider the nine bark. So that's it for pruning nine bark. Again, thank you for joining us today.